And now... The Steel River Prison Break, starring Bartlett Robinson. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. It was set for Friday. And I mean set. We thought of everything. Cronin would be waiting in a speedboat under the wall... We'd make it during the recreation period. Some of the boys would start a rhubarb in the far corner of the yard, and we'd be up and over and in the river before the guards missed us. And Tuesday night, the radio changed everything. Rising. Flood stage is expected at midnight. Rain is still falling in the upper watershed. Flood warnings have been issued along the waterfront here in Trickburg. Elsewhere, rising waters are reported in the upper Allegheny and Monarch. That does it. What? The flood. Did you hear that, Moish? Moish? Huh? Did you hear that on the radio? Yeah. Yeah, I heard it. So it's raining outside. Yeah, and it's raining up the river, and it's raining in the mountains. Yeah, and we're mighty lucky to be nice and warm in a comfy little old prison cell. We gotta move up the timetable. Huh? What are you talking about? We walk out of here tomorrow night, Thursday morning latest. How come? Cronin won't be here first till Friday afternoon. Listen, by midnight tomorrow, this prison will be an island surrounded by the biggest flood since 1886. Very interesting. I don't know much about these things. We don't ever get much water on the Rio Grande. Well, I know. I was born half a mile from here. I know the floods. I was raised on them. Flooded out twice a year when I was a kid, every fall and every spring. By tomorrow night, this cell block will be a swimming pool. That'll be a change. Tomorrow night, we go. Well, what about Cronin? Cronin ain't going to get here in this flood. I don't think we ought to risk it, Bragg. There ain't any risk. You don't know how it is when there's a flood. People go crazy. We get out of here, we act like any other characters trying to get to high ground. Only we head for my house, get a change of clothes, and we're on our way. We'll be at Cronin's joint in Youngstown before he could ever get started. I don't know, Bragg. If you're going with me, you'll go when I say so. And I say tomorrow. But, Bragg... What, Runt? I can't swim. We already had a gun. Don't matter how. Cronin got it into me. It's hid behind the tubes in my radio. I got this radio in my cell because I've been such a model prisoner. Me. And this was one program I didn't want to miss a word of. Anyway, you couldn't get anything else. All the rest of that day, all night, the next morning. Holy... Attention, please. That's four the feet above flood stage. Water Street and Fourth has given way. All residents of the Brownsville district are advised to evacuate their homes at once. Here we go. Huh? Brownsville. That's what they call the neighborhood around here. Hey, Marsh. Yeah, Bragg? Are you getting this? Every word. It won't be long now. Bragg, look. What? The floor at the end of the sail block. Water. Trickle of water. I told you that means there's a foot and a half or two feet out in the yard. A boat to 42, Watson Alley. Hey! And the lights went out. Turn the lights on. Come on, you guys. What are you doing? Come on, you guys. 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 Come on, you There'll be six feet of water in this cell block by morning. Come on. Where are you taking us, Lefty? We're moving you to the Conestoga County Jail. It's on high ground. You'll be safe there until the water drops. You'll be in the drunk tank on the fourth floor. I object. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. Let's make it snappy. The water's rising two feet an hour. I'm going to open the doors. Form in a line and follow me. And no funny business. Oh, funny boy. What's that, Runt? Yeah. Moish. Set. You forgot. No, I didn't. Ain't you going to tape it to your leg? It goes into my belt. We're going to need it in less than three minutes. Now stick close to me. All right, now, line up. Let's go. This way, men. The buses are right here at the gate. All right, come on, Ed. Keep it moving. Run. Yeah. Patty by the gate. 
I'll take him from behind. You get his gun. Right. All right, let's go, man. Make it snappy. You get lefty, I'll get Riley. Hey, what about me? Run, shoot straighter. Just keep with me. All right, come on, boys. We got all night now. Snap it up. Come on, get the lead out. What? You got the gun, run. Got it. Hey, get back in the line. You make me. Stand right where you are. Don't let anybody move. Get behind me, run. Go on, shoot, lefty. Fatty makes a good chest protector. Ah, oh, relax, Fatty. You might not get hurt. Drop that oh. hand, right? And you're done. I just might drop you, Lefty. You know what that'll get you? Sure. But what's the difference? One guard or two guards? It's the same hot seat. We better move, Greg. Every screw of the police will be down here now. Yeah. Let's go, boys. second act of Suspense. Memo on medals. Interesting information about our military awards and decorations. Campaign medals were authorized by Congress in 1905 for all officers and men engaged in specified wars and military action, including such widely divergent battles as the Civil War in the United States and the Boxer Rebellion in China. The Navy and Marine Corps have a special Manila Bay Medal for members of the United States Asiatic Squadron under command of Commodore George Dewey in May of 1898. The Haitian Campaign of 1915 is commemorated with a medal, as is the Santo Domingo Expedition, which suppressed a revolt in that country and preserved order during elections in 1916. The Army has its Mexican Service Medal, for those involved in any of several expeditions or engagements from April 12, 1911 through June 16, 1919. There is also the Army of Cuban Pacification Medal for United States troops who, from October of 1906 to April of 1909, helped establish a stable government in that island nation. The Victory Medal was initially awarded to all United States service personnel in World War I expeditionary forces, including, for the first time, women serving in the military units. There is a story behind every American medal, a proud story of devotion to country and unselfish service to keep it strong and free. And now, starring Bartlett Robinson, Act Two of the Steel River Prison Break. We splashed up Ohio Street and there wasn't anyone following us. The screws were too busy getting the other cons into the buses. They couldn't have found us anyway because we lost ourselves behind the swinging doors of Hurley Heath Saloon where I used to rush the growler for my old man. We were in pretty good shape. I hadn't used my own gun yet And Runt had three rounds left in the guard's gun. So we just stood there in the dark with the water lapping around our knees and watched the buses loaded with stir birds pull out one by one for the Conestoga County Jail. We had it made. We got it made, boys. Yeah, so far. What do we do now, swim? I told you I can't swim. We ain't gonna walk, that's for sure. My ma's house is ten blocks closer to the river. This water's going up, not down. And it stinks. Sure it stinks. Floods always stink. You should smell what it's like when the water drops. Only we won't be here to smell it. Hey, listen. Hey, where's our radio coming from? That's a rescue boat. Maybe you'll rescue us. That's what I'm counting on, Run. You let me handle it. Just you two act like uh, like you was a little tight. Hey, Mac. Over this way. Where? Duck. He's using a searchlight. Just stay behind the swinging doors. Over here at Hurley Heath. What are you doing here? We took the last guy out of here a half hour ago. Yeah, we was in the back room with a pitcher of beer. We wasn't ready to leave yet. Uh, you're lucky I cut through this way. Now that the cons are out of the pen, this entire area's been cleared. You guys might have drowned. Yeah, I guess we might have. Yeah, take my hand. Up you go. Thanks, mister. Boy, never saw so much rain in all my life. 
All aboard? Yep. Yeah, then let's... Hey, what kind of suits is that? You guys are kind con- <laughs> That's right, buddy. All right, take off his gun, Baker. Run. Huh? Strip him. I want to cover this number on my back. Oh, yeah, sure. Give me a hand, boys. There, there you are, Bray. Good. Over the side with him. Huh? You ain't going to... No, I ain't going to. You are. Over the side. Bray, that's, that's murder. Look who's talking. You shot a guard ten minutes ago. What was that? Target practice? Over the side. Okay, Bray. Okay, you two. Hit the deck out of sight. Here we go. Hey, where are we going, Bragg? My ma's house. Now, we're on Ohio Street now. We turn left onto Liberty, and eight blocks from here, we're home. Oh, turn off that radio. Yeah, here's Liberty Street now. Hang on, boys. Hey, take it easy, Bragg. Watch out, Bragg. There's, there's a boatload of people ahead. Get down, run. Get down. Bragg, you ran down that boat. Yeah, I know. There were women on it. It's kids. That's their tough luck. We gotta go back. We can't go back. Hey, where's Run? Huh? Run. Run! Hey, where are you? Get down, boys. Now stay out of sight. But he ain't here. He must have fell out when we hit that boat. We gotta go back for him. We can't, boys. He's got the gun. He had the guard's gun. I still got mine with a full clip. Yeah, but Bragg, he can't swim. I know. Maybe... Maybe the water ain't deep there, huh? Maybe you can walk. Are you kidding? Look at those storefronts. There's 15 feet of water under us. We tied up to the front porch roof of Ma's house. It didn't take long to rip the radio and the battery out of that launch, kick a hole in her bottom, and sink her on Ma's front yard. We needed the radio. I wanted to know whether the boys were looking for us or for flood victims. Your services are desperately needed in Frickburg. Attention all units of the National Guard. They were looking for flood victims. With people drowning and typhoid threatening and the water supply cut off and the phone lines out and the National Guard and Army called in, no one was thinking much about three escapees. I mean two. Ma wasn't home, Natch. She was an old hand at floods. When that water hits 35 feet at the Ohio Avenue Bridge, Ma always lights out for Aunt Carrie's in Mount Austin and sits it out. But everything was snug on the second floor, and my room was just like I'd left it. So Moish and I hit the sack, hoping the water wouldn't come any higher. Hey, Moish. Huh? Well, come on, come on. Rise and shine. Wake up. Hey. What are you doing in my cell? <laughs> this ain't a cell, you jerk. Huh? Oh, where am I? You're in my ma's house, remember? We ain't oh. stirring no longer. Yeah, yeah. Well, come on, come on, come on. Get with right. it. Look out the window. All right. I- I'm hungry. Oh, who ain't? Look at that. Uh, why? It stopped raining. The water's dropping. Uh. You can see the parlor windows on the house across the street. So... So, by this afternoon, we can move. I'm hungry. Well, you're going to be hungrier. Ma's kitchen will be three inches deep in muck. Hey, you know, when this water drops, they'll be looking for us. And we won't be here. By midnight tonight, we'll be in Cronin's joint in Youngstown. How? You're here, ain't you? Yeah. And don't ask how. Just take my word for it. We'll be there. <laughs> By five o'clock that afternoon, we were plenty hungry. But we could stand a little more of that because the water had drained out of the street and the people were beginning to drift back to their homes, picking their way through the ankle-deep muck. It was time for us to move. Moish and I put on a couple of my best suits while the radio droned on and on. Sweetheart, we're in business. Steubenville in Cincinnati. 
The cops over in Ohio will be so busy they'll never see the all points flash about us. Yeah, mud's gonna ruin your pretty pants. Turn up the cuffs and let's go. At the temporary morgue in the McCandless School. Hey. They turned my old schoolhouse into a morgue. Listen. Huh? Heard of them. Mrs. Mary? Correction. That's Mrs. Margaret Bragg. Hmm? Margaret Bragg? That's my ma! Continue with the third act of Suspense. We have, together, ample capacity in freedom to defend freedom. This is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. NATO possesses a shield of well-equipped, highly trained land and sea forces, plus tactical air support and special units. The NATO shield extends from north of Norway to the eastern mountains of Antolia in Asian Turkey. Complete disposition of forces is covered by a radar warning system plus a perfected network of telecommunications enabling the Supreme Commander to direct operations with extreme rapidity over a 2,000-mile front. The United States of America is a part of NATO. You should be aware of and alert to the programs and objectives of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And now... Starring Bartlett Robinson, Act Three of The Steel River Prison Break. Maybe it was a mistake. It wouldn't be the first time they'd made mistakes like that. Or maybe it was a trick. Maybe the warden put out that flash to trap me. But maybe it was on the level. I had to know if my mother was dead. I had to be sure. So Moish and I sloughed through the mud up to our ankles, but not out on the Youngstown Road. I was headed for the schoolhouse. And Moish, well, he's a good kid. He'd come along. They were stretched out in the assembly hall. Row on row of them, on cots, covered with sheets. In the assembly hall, where us kids used to pledge allegiance to the flag and sing America the Beautiful. They got her here. Maybe it's a trap. I gotta be sure. I gotta see her. Yeah, I know. If you want to get out, you go. It's okay with me. Oh, no, no. I'm sticking, but you keep your eyes open. Yeah, sure. What's the tag on that one, say? Uh, Campanelli, Luigi. I didn't get this far to give myself up in no lousy morgue. <laughs> Moish, that door behind his cots. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Come on, kid. Huh? Where's his lead? To the balcony. Above the swimming pool. This way. Right. Come on. Now, come on. We've got yes, to gotta make it across the catwalk by the high diving board. Okay. Go ahead. I'll follow you. Okay, Moish, come on. Come on. we got to get out through here. Yeah, right. Stay where you are, Moish. Nuts to you, Lefty. No! Moish! You're next, Brad. Why, you dirty... You're ready to fight, Moish? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Hold out your hands. 
Okay. Let's go. Lefty. Yeah? Can I... Can I say goodbye to my... My ma before I go? Yeah, I suppose so. How did it happen, Lefty? How did she drown? Didn't you read her tag? No. Seems the rescue boat she was in was capsized by an unidentified launch at the corner of Ohio on Liberty Streets last night. You're lying. That's what the tag says. It's sort of a hit-and-run pilot. You're lying. I was running that launch. Oh, I... you were? Well, like you said last night, Bragg, what difference does it make if you kill two instead of one? It's the same a hot seat, ain't it? Suspense. In which Bartlett Robinson starred in the Steel River Prison Break, written, produced, and directed by William N. Robeson. Supporting Bartlett Robinson in the Steel River Prison Break were Barney Phillips, Jerry Hausner, Jack Moyles, Sam Pierce, Eddie Firestone, and Norm Alden. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with The Voice of Company A. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense.